How's it going everyone? It's Nick again and I'm back with another video. My last Yankees video? Okay. I'll admit that didn't age very well. For me to think it was a lost season and I gotta apologize to my beloved team for losing faith in this season and just already looking forward to next season. And kudos to my guys for looking alive again and bringing this back. Looking like this again. I'm glad I can still wear this shirt in 2020. Okay, so now that I got my apology out of the way, please remember to like and subscribe because it really helped me out. And now let's cue that intro. So, as poorly as my take on the 2020 season, being a lost season was, at least here's a take that I guess I shouldn't really pat myself on the back for, but I may as well just talk about it. The take that actually did age really well, and that's that you're crazy if you're giving up on Garrett Cole now, because boy has he been brilliant these last few games. I know, last video, I started to worry a little bit about him. On a scale of one to 10, how much I was worried was at three, but hey, here he is, looking dominant again, looking like that 324 million man that we were wanting and hoping for to be our ace. Let's go. Yeah, Garrett Cole is looking real good right now. The game against Baltimore, where he was pitching a shutout until the sixth inning. I mean, he only gave up one earned run, but hey, he got a lot of runners on and then the rest of the damage was done afterwards. But even though in those games that he struggled, his strikeouts were still up. His last two games, his ERA is just .64. <laughs> .64. For the whole month of September, only three starts, it's .90. And his whip is at .7 for the month of September. This year, his 87 strikeouts, which is second to Shane Bieber's 102. He's eighth in strikeouts per nine innings, at 11.9. I told you don't worry about him. Mets fans, if you wanna say DeGrom is better, fine, go ahead. In fact, I don't think you're totally wrong about that. In fact, I don't really care. I mean, go ahead and say that. You're not gonna get under my skin. But hey, the thing I actually do care about is the fact that Garrett Cole is pitching like he's worth that $324 million. And if you want to complain about that, please, did you want that ace or not? If you weren't willing to spend that money, you're not getting Garrett Cole. Especially after what Steven Strasburg got paid. Yeah, there's no way you're getting Garrett Cole if you're not going to offer him that much money. That just is how it is. And it's the New York Yankees, not the Oakland A's or the Tampa Bay Rays. We don't play money ball, we spend, okay? You should want and expect the Yankees to spend big and... They made a big splash, and it's paying off right now. But it's not even just Garrett Cole when it comes to the pitching. Davey Garcia, man, that kid is nice. Brian Cashman, you were smart by not giving up Davey Garcia or Clint Frazier to get Mike Clevenger as great as Mike Clevenger is. He was right that the Indies were asking for way too much by asking for at least two of Davey Garcia, Clint Frazier, and Clark Schmidt, and even one of Clint Frazier or Davey Garcia right now is way too much to give up. So good job, Brian Cashman. And we will talk about Clint Frazier, but I want to talk about starting pitching first. Now, Davey Garcia, he's only 21 years old. I'm almost 27. This kid is 21, and oh, he's looking real good. Now, he doesn't really bring the heat. His fastball averages at around 92.7 miles per hour. League averages at 92.3. So, okay, he's slightly above average. He's just not what Luis Severino at his best is, throwing 100 miles per hour. But it's fine because, hey, he's still very much effective enough. Now, he did get roughed up a little bit in the second start against the Orioles, but his debut against the Mets... And his last two starts, looking really sharp. And you know what else? He has a 24.2% K rate and only a 4% walk rate right now. I know he's only pitched four games, but hey, four games so far, so far so good. Now, Masahiro Tanaka. Tanaka, not Tanaka. He's been very on top of his game this year. He had one bad start against the Rays on August 18th, but outside of that, he's been very sharp. His ERA did go up a little bit in his latest start last night in America, this morning in my time in Japan, but he did go seven innings. Other than the third inning, he was excellent. This year, he has a 3.27 ERA, a 1.02 whip, which is his best since 2016. His 39 strikeouts and 44 innings pitched this year, that's 8 per 9 innings. Japanese lesson for you guys. Sugoi! Hontoni subarashi! On to J-Hap, 
who I completely threw under the bus in my last Yankees video, and his numbers this year still look really bad. But his last few starts, he actually didn't do so bad at all. I'd still rather not have him back next year. And with $100 million off the books after this year, well, yeah, the heavy luxury tax, though, of course, to pay Garrett Cole, but it's the Yankees. We should want and expect them to spend, and hey, hopefully fans are coming back next year, and we'll make that money back. I mean, okay, there's the virtual fans, the cardboard cutouts. Okay, but still, with real fans, I mean, I actually don't really know how it works with the cardboard cutouts and all that, but I would think that real fans will still make the team a lot more money. I mean, I'm not sure. Again, I don't know how it works, actually, but like, I know that there is some money to spend to have a cardboard cutout in the stands, but still, I can't imagine that creating nearly as much revenue. And also, next year when there's a 162 game season, and you know it's the Yankees, they're gonna get revenue, because the Yankees are the biggest market in Major League Baseball. But back to Jay Happ, we don't wanna spend 17 million on a bottom of the rotation guy. I was against the re-signing right from the get-go, and yeah, I think I was right, so. Yeah, I can't wait till he's gone, and yeah, I'd rather not re-sign him even for cheap. Even though he's done well his last two starts still, like, I just don't really believe in him to actually be reliable. But I'm not really here to be negative because I have plenty of good to talk about. Yeah, I was a little negative right there, but enough with the negativity now. Let's go back to being positive because there's a lot of positivity to talk about when it comes to the Yankees right now. Jordan Montgomery, I'll keep it short with him. He hasn't had a good year at all. His last start, though, he actually did do well. I had high hopes for him in 2018, before Tommy John surgery happened, and I thought a year removed from Tommy John surgery, I thought he'd be a nice middle of the rotation guy, but okay, he hasn't really been that, but yeah, I tried not to be negative, but that just happened to be in my script, but okay, at least a positive, he did do well in his last start. And also another positive, our top three guys are doing great right now. Garrett Cole, Masahiro Tanaka, and Davey Garcia, they're doing great right now, so. All right, and also for the future, no, I'm not ready to give up on Luis Severino. I'm actually older than him. Do I think he'll be that dominant ace he was in 2017 and the first half of 2018 again? That has yet to be seen and I highly doubt it's gonna be anytime soon, like as soon as he comes off the IL. At the very worst, I think that he's gonna be a good pitcher again when he gets healthy. Great though, I don't know, but Am I ready to give up on him in the future? No. I just know we won't see him this year or for probably half of next year either. But yeah, like I said, I'm not ready to give up on him. No way. Oh, and not that long ago, Earl just Chapman, he just looked like a hot mess when he came back from COVID. He just looked lost. And I don't know. I don't remember if I talked about Kevin Cash in my last video, but yeah, that dude's a clown. Earl just Chapman was all over the place at that time and he had a two-run lead to hold on to. You really think that he'd intentionally hit someone, especially throw at someone's head in that kind of situation? Come on, you're a clown. And then to just decide to threaten the team that you have a bunch of guys that can throw like 95, uh, 98 miles per hour, 100 miles per hour, whatever it was, to throw at us, like, come on. So yeah, Kevin Cash is a clown, but okay. I want to actually praise the Yankees more, so yeah, Aroldis Chapman is back, and there are actually people out there who think that he wasn't that good even before this year, and you're crazy if you ever thought that. Do you even watch baseball? Come on. But hey, he's back and he's dealing, okay? So, I'm loving it. Hey, Zach Britton, he did have that bad game against the Mets, but... He hasn't given up an earned run since then. Chad Green and Adam Adovino, yeah, they did do terrible against the Blue Jays on September 7th. That was the game that triggered me to make my last video. It was also Luke Voigt's putrid defense that cost the Yankees that game, but Adovino and Green, hey, at least they've been doing fine ever since. Okay, I gotta talk about the offense now because the savages in the box are back. Six or more home runs in the last three games. Yes, my guys are still savages in that box. First, let's talk about Luke Voigt. May the force be with you, Luke. Currently leading the league in home runs. Bro. Did you ever think that Luke Voigt would ever lead the league in home runs? Right now, as I'm recording this, I'm not sure when I'm going to be done editing this, but in a 162-game season, his 20 home runs and 46 RBIs would be 70 home runs and 162 RBIs. 
Now, do I think he'd actually put up those numbers in a full season? No, of course not. His name is not Barry Bonds. But hey, he's got that Sammy Sosa hop in him when he hits those dingers. Aaron Judge and Giancarlo Stanton are finally off the IL. Yes! Oh boy, that is such a relief. Even if they don't get on base, like even if they go over 5, just their presence alone makes a difference. They are those kinds of players. I wish we could see them in the lineup together again at some point. But actually, well, I expect that in the playoffs, but I hope to see that tomorrow against the Red Sox, or should I say today, for those watching in the US, which I know is going to be most of you. But hey, John Carlos Stanton went 4 for 5 last night. But that's what we love to see, Big G. And anyone stupid enough to say that the Yankees made his mistake by getting him, I'll just leave this rant for you guys that I wrote last year on Facebook. You can pause the video right now so that you can actually go ahead and read it. But aside from that, if you want to complain about his contract, again, like I said about Garrett Cole, cry me a river. This isn't the Oakland A's or the Tampa Bay Rays. We don't play cheap. We don't play Moneyball. And Moneyball's a great movie, but no, that's not how the Yankees play. That's not how you should want them to play. And in fact, John Carlos Stanton is just barely top 20 this year in highest payroll this season. Now, okay, next year and the following years, his payroll is about to get a little crazy. I know. However, in 2017, when he won the MVP on a losing team, hit more home runs than anyone since Barry Bonds and Sammy Sosa in 2001. Obviously, everyone who knows baseball would have loved to have him on their team. To think he'd repeat that kind of success? Okay, that's a little crazy. But he did more than just fine in 2018. Like I said, 38 home runs and 100 RBIs in a season? I'll take that any day. I mean, how could you not? I don't care if he struck it out 211 times on the season. The 38 home runs and 100 RBIs, that's what I actually care about. And yeah, I didn't even bother to look at fan graphs. I don't know what is WRC plus this year. All I do know is it was way over the league average of 100 that year. Now Clint Frazier, who I said I'll talk about later, I'm going to talk about him now. As much as I didn't have a lot of good to say in my last video, I at least had some good things to say about Clint Frazier and that still stands. Hey, he went over 4 in the last game. It happens. Hey, at least he got on base though because he drew a walk. But hey, he's been doing excellent. He's earned his spot on this team. He deserves to stay and he deserves to play. Not just be on the team as a backup. No, he should be playing every day and he needs to be part of the team's future. I didn't even mention Glaber Torres in my last video. It's time I do now because he has a six game hitting streak going. He was starting to heat up right before he got hurt. Since he's been back from the IL, he's been swinging a very hot bat. Good to have you, Glaber Torres. Let's keep it going. DJ LeMayhew, he has been a machine, and yes, I know in 2020, we don't come to conclusions just from looking at batting average, but his 373 batting average on the season, yeah, he's the man, and his OPS is over 1,000 right now. But if you want to see Saber metrics, his WRC Plus is 136, and his ISO is 286, which is actually higher than what it was last year. He's walking more while striking out less this year. I know, shortened season, but it is what it is. I don't actually expect him to hit 40 home runs in any season, which is what he'd be on pace right now in 162 games with 10 and 40. I know that's not DJ LeMahieu at all, but I'll take it for what it is. He's a beast both at the plate and at second base. He's versatile enough to play first and third, and that's something we already knew anyways. He's already someone I wanted on the Yankees even way before they actually got him, and he definitely needs to be re-signed after this season, and I'm confident that he will re-sign with the Yankees. Gary Sanchez, yeah, he struggled big time this year, but hey, he has a three game hitting streak going and his nine home runs in 41 games, that'd be 35 in 162 game season. His 21 RBIs would be 82 in 162 games, but RBIs can come down to opportunities a lot of the time, which is why Mike Trout has seasons where he didn't even hit 80 RBIs and only three where he hit 100 or more. It, comes down to opportunity a lot of the time but yeah Gary Sanchez has missed on a lot of opportunities yeah I'm not actually here to about, talk about Mike Trout I'm here to talk about the Yankees but I was just talking about how RBIs can be flawed sometimes but yeah Gary Sanchez he still has that power just he's been striking out way too much without actually producing and all right three game hitting streak now okay hopefully this is the beginning of a hot streak now i cannot go without mentioning Gio Urshela, who's on a seven game hitting streak right now well including the games before he hit the il but 
He's 5 for 11 in his last 14, and his walk rate is a lot higher than it was last year. To be honest, I actually agreed with Giraffe Neck Mark when he said Gio Rochelle is overrated. So, Mark, if somehow you happen to be watching this, you weren't alone. And he sure isn't a one-year wonder either. Last year, his defensive highlight reel was way more impressive than his defensive metrics. His metrics weren't all that impressive, but his highlight reel showed shades of Nolan Arenado and Matt Chapman, but hey, this year, four defensive runs in 34 games, that's very impressive. My first video on the Yankees, I got a comment saying that he's tired of hearing about Aaron Hicks' walk rate and wants to see him hit more. I both agree and disagree. I definitely want to see him hit the ball too, and if you ever watched Yankee games since 2017, you know he's very capable of hitting the ball, and he hasn't done much of that this year. But he is on a four game hitting streak right now. All four of those games, just one hit though, but we can at least conclude that just from his walk rate and on base percentage or his WRC plus of 122, he is definitely not a minus offensively. Defensively, okay, those numbers look terrible and not that long ago, his defense, especially his cannon of an arm, is what kept him in the big leagues. But hey, overall, he, at least he's not a minus on this team. Brett Gardner, yeah, he may be three for his last seven, but at 37, I don't care if he's the longest tenured Yankee. He had his time and he can go. Ken Higashioka. Okay, I'll just keep this short. Who the hell would have thought that he of all people would be the one on the Yankees to hit three home runs in a game this year? Raise your hand if you predicted that. Okay. So all that said, apologies for losing faith when I made my last Yankees video. My Yankees are back, the Savages in the box, let's go. In an upcoming series against Boston, yeah, let's spank them around again. Three and a half left behind the Rays, with 10 left for our guys, and nine left for them. I think the Rays have a slightly tougher remaining schedule. And the Yankees are the fifth seed as of now. Only two games behind the Twins and the A's, but the top three seeds go to the division winner. So if we want that, the Yankees need to catch the Rays. I'm not positive that that'll happen because let's be real, the Rays are a damn good team, even though their manager is a clown, but it is possible that the Yankees catch them just three and a half games back. That's the end of this video. Please remember to like and subscribe. Because it's the best way to show your support and I'll see you next time.